I'm Errol Lewis. Over the course of just a few days recently, a 262-bed emergency medical facility was created on the grounds of the South Beach Psychiatric Center in Staten Island. This was done by the State Office of Mental Health as well as the National Guard, including a deployed National Guardsman Max Rose, also known as the congressman from the area. Uh, he just completed his deployment this week, and he joins me now to talk more about what they were able to accomplish. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Errol, thank you so much for having me. Um, first of all, can you explain to I me, mean, was this just a, a coincidence of timing or did you arrange it this way that Congress happens to be um, home, not necessarily in session in Washington, and you actually managed to use part of that time for this deployment? Uh, look, I, I certainly volunteered to serve. Um, but it, it begins and ends with that. Um, you know, in, in, with the Army, you plan and God laughs. Um, and let's be very clear here. <laughs> that anything that I did um, and I have ever done in the military pales in comparison to those who have done one, two, three, four, five deployments. And it pales in comparison to what our frontline medical professionals have done. You know, I, I, I saw doctors who had lost people or whose own family members were in the ICU still doing 18 hour days, you know, nurses who hadn't been able to hug their loved ones in a month that were still working day in and day out. And I, I think back to the, uh, the last huddle that we did right before we accepted this first patient, accepted this first patient after six days. We built this hospital in six days. And the soldiers who were there from the famed 69th Infantry Regiment, my old unit, uh, they cheered the frontline medical professionals, the soldiers in this new war. We gotta be there for them because they're still in mm. this fight. Um, but this, these extra additional beds right for Staten Island and for New York City, they are so needed to help reduce the pressure that our hospitals are facing right now. Yeah, we've um, reported that uh, per capita, Staten Island actually is the the hardest hit borough at this point, or at least it was as of about a week ago. Um, what, what's that attributable to, do you think? Well, look, I think that there's several things to consider, and this applies to my entire congressional district, South Brooklyn included. When you think of the people who we now call essential workers, right, they were always essential. That, that's not something new, but the cops, the firemen, teachers, nurses, first responders, the transit workers, um, these are people that live on Staten Island and South Brooklyn, and they, they, are, they can't afford to stay home right now. This city needs them, this state needs them, this country needs them. We always have. They're the reason why the lights turn on in the city, and they're the reason why we are safe, protected, and healthy. So certainly if people are leaving the household, they're more highly susceptible. I'd also like to note that um, uh, Staten Island was the site of the governor's first testing center in uh, New York City. This was something that I personally um, recommended to, that, that he do. And so testing obviously does uh, increase testing results and obviously increase positive cases as well. St at the Staten Island testing site alone, where we're doing roughly a thousand tests a day, in total, we've tested more people than over 20 states have tested. To put this into comparison, there's so much more to, to do. Um, not saying that. But uh, that in and of itself does lead to more positive test cases. Right. Uh, you you um, have mentioned that you want a lot more testing and that the federal government ought to step up and uh, take care of a lot of it. Is that going to require legislation, do you think? No. No. Let, let, let's be clear about what the federal government could do. Um, and this is related to testing as well as PPE production. And this relates back to the supply chain. Federal government needs to exert its full authorities related to the Defense Production Act, as well as the president's other authorities as commander in chief to make sure that we are dramatically increasing productions of PPE, laboratory equipment, swabs for testing, as well as the reagents that make the tests possible in the first place. This isn't rocket science, Errol. 
But there's been an unbelievable and unprecedented surge in demand for these items, and that is a global surge, and the free market has not been able to catch up. And as a consequence, we are not able to do the amount of testing that we need. This is not academic. This is not theoretical. You're interested in putting people back to work. If you're interested in slowly and incrementally opening this economy back up again, testing is absolutely vital. Now, that's a federal role. Look, it was, it was the United States of America that, went to, that sent the man to the moon, the United States of America that won World War II and the Cold War, and it is the United States of America that needs to step in and help solve this problem. The states have a role, the cities have a role, of course, but we need the federal government to, and we need the president to lead, and nothing would make me happier than to see one of the things be successful. In one one of the things COVID. you and I often talk about it, it, it. Congressman, one of the things you and I often talk about is when the federal government can't get out of its own way. So, for example, we know that the money expired yesterday for one of the key small business recovery programs. That $250 billion is gone. Uh, and now there's a sort of a fight going on among members of Congress right. about how and when and whether to uh, get more money into that program. How is that affecting your district? No, look, it, 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 it is um, affecting my district. It's uh, affecting the country. Look, only it appears that at this point, Washington, D.C. is allergic to common sense. So let's be very simple about what we have to do here, because we've got two crises that are connected. We've got a health care crisis, a pandemic, and we have an economic crisis that that pandemic catalyzed. And as a consequence, our health care institutions, which we so desperately need now more than ever, our hospitals, they are always teetering right now on fiscal insolvency. They need rapid infusions of cash. Our state and local governments, which again, it's not theoretical, they employ our cops and so many of our other essential employees, they are in a fiscal crisis. And yes, our small businesses are in a fiscal financial distress. All three simultaneously need to be as quickly as possible infused with significant amounts of capital. And that is something that we just previously did. We need to just do it again. I see no reason why we shouldn't do this and do it very quickly. Um, for, for you and all of your colleagues who are running for re-election, one would think that it would also happen to work as pretty good politics uh, to go ahead and rescue uh, hospitals, local governments, first responders, uh, and, and yet here we are at an impasse. Well, look, I, for, for one, let me just tell you this, I couldn't care less about politics right now. I care about doing the right thing. Um, and, you know, as you're... Uh, mentor and uh, friend Bill Lynch said, but, you know, good, good policy makes good politics, and that's always the case. This is about those saving lives. Okay, we are in a moment of complete and total war. Okay, I, I just put on my, my uniform and deployed to my own hometown. That's a, someone's worst nightmare to think about. So we have got to have the federal government, we've got to have Congress act, but we can't do things in a silo anymore. We can't just kick the can down the road. We talk about the need for beds. Here's why hospitals are so important here. Okay, when we are dealing with COVID, these are significant healthcare crises that require a hospital system to act. They require a full, highly integrated, highly expertly trained medical professionals acting within a hospital setting. All the while, we have turned off our uh, non-essential medical services. We have turned off the non-essential um, surgeries. That's these hospitals' lifeline, their financial lifeline. So we need them, these hospitals, now more than ever but they're suffering through an economic crisis. Why would we kick the can down the road? I'm giving them capital. It makes zero sense. We will not get out of this economic crisis unless we get out of this pandemic, and we need our hospitals to do so. Okay, I know you'll be uh, back in a session in Washington in a few weeks. Hopefully these and other issues will get taken care of at that time, if not sooner. Representative Max Rose, thanks Amen. for spending some time with us. Hey, thank you for having me.